turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Matthew. I'd like to read from Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. We began studying last Sunday morning about angels. Uh, there are multitudes of angels. There are celestial angels, multitudes of angels in heaven, in the eternal heaven. Uh, there are many angels that watch over the people of God and minister to the people of God. There are celestial angels that watch over us now. There are many angels that carry out the vengeance of God. We studied some about that and about how God sends forth an angel to mark those that are servants of his before God ever carries out judgment on a city or a nation. So we looked already at several things about angels. We'll begin today in Matthew chapter 18. I'll begin with verse 6, and then we're going to come down to verse 10. Matthew chapter 18, beginning in verse 6. The word of God says, Jesus is speaking. Jesus says, But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it would better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. So let me say, first of all, those little ones can have reference to children. Uh, and so I, if, uh, if you look at it as applying to children, first of all, all of us parents, uh, we need to be careful, grandparents, parents, need to be careful about how we treat our children. Uh, it can also, that doesn't mean don't carry out discipline, because if you don't carry out discipline, you don't love your children. But... Uh, you need to be more careful about the words you say to your children and be careful that what you say and how you say it is uh, not contrary to God's word. But little ones can also have reference to babes in Christ. A person can be an older person uh, and still be a little one or a babe in Christ. And so he says, Whoso shall, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now come down to verse 10, still in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10. The word of God says, still Jesus speaking and continuing the thought about the seriousness of offending little ones and hurting little ones. Jesus says in verse 10, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So there are angels that are beholding the face of the Father. And I think that the uh, clear indication here is that they are uh, speaking to the Father about any, any of the little ones that are being offended these are angels of those little ones. Their angels do always behold the face of our Father which is in heaven. So Jesus is saying, uh, better not offend these little ones and their angels are beholding the face of the Father which is in heaven. God may, we've already studied about avenging angels. So if those angels of those little ones are beholding the face of the Father... It may be that the Father sends those angels to carry out vengeance on those who offend little ones. We better be careful about how we offend little ones who believe in Christ. Now then, turning your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, I want us to begin now to look at angels speaking to people. In uh, looking at angels speaking to people, there are Old and New Testament examples of angels speaking to people. We'll look at two or three examples in the New Testament of angels speaking to people. It's very important that we understand that sometimes people think they've heard from angels or think they've heard from God. But the message they've heard is contrary to what the Word of God says. And so it's very important, because I've had many people tell me, well, God said this, God told me to do this, God told me to do that. It's a very serious matter when you say God told you to do something. 
And if, if you think God has ever told you to do something contrary to what the scriptures teach, that was not God and it was not angels of God that were speaking to you. But God does speak to his people sometimes. God speaks to his people. Sometimes it's in a still, small voice. Sometimes it's in a loud voice. There are people who have heard God speak in all different kinds of ways. God does speak. Angels speak to God through angels speak to his people. Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, we'll begin verse 11. Luke chapter 1, this is talking about Zacharias and Elizabeth. This is one of the very important occasions where an angel, and that angel's name was Gabriel. Sometimes we have the names of angels, and in this chapter, Gabriel is going to speak to John, the, I mean to uh, Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, and then Gabriel is going to speak to Mary, the mother of Jesus. And it wasn't just Gabriel speaking to John the Baptist and John the Baptist just not responding and communicating. I want you to notice as we look at, especially here in Luke chapter 1, that as Gabriel is speaking to Zacharias, Zacharias is going to be speaking back to the angel, and the angel is going to be speaking back to Zacharias. Same thing when Gabriel is speaking to Mary later in this chapter. Angels do sometimes speak to God's children. Luke chapter 1 beginning in verse 11. The word of God says, And there appeared unto him, that is to Zacharias, an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Almost without exception, throughout the scriptures, when an angel ever speaks to anyone, there's great fear that comes over that person. There's also fear when God begins to manifest his presence to any individual. And the reason for that, one of the main reasons, is that we are sinful creatures. And these celestial angels, as well as God himself, they are without sin. So when God appears to us, or an angel appears to us, we feel very much afraid when an angel comes. So an angel appeared to Zacharias, and when that angel appeared to Zacharias, Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Verse 13, But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. At this time, Zacharias was an old man. He and Elizabeth had been praying for a child for many, many years. They were past the childbearing age. And now an angel comes to Zacharias in verse 13. The angel said, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Had he only prayed one time? No, he had been praying all his life to be able to have a child. Thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb, and many of the children of Israel shall return to their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now listen carefully to verse 18. Everything I've read in uh, verses uh, 13 through 6, uh, 6 17. That was the angel speaking to Zacharias. Now look in verse 18. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Do you think the fear that he first felt has somewhat gone away? Do you think now he's beginning to feel great joy at the message that Gabriel is speaking to him? Indeed he is. Verse 18. Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. The angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of God and am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed because thou believest not my words which shall be fulfilled in their season. So John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, was not, was not able to speak again until John the Baptist was born. And when John the Baptist was born, that's when God loosed 
the tongue of Zacharias, and Zacharias said his name shall be called John. He was, he was telling the people that's what the angel told me that his name shall be called. It's a marvelous thing that the Spirit of God and that angels of God and that God himself sometimes speaks to his people, to human beings while they're here on this earth. Come down now to verse 26. This is the angel Gabriel, same angel, speaking to Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. And the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city called Galilee, a city of Galilee named, named Nazareth, to a virgin. I want you to notice in verse 27, the fact that she's a virgin is expressed two times. To a virgin, this angel Gabriel is being sent to a virgin, a spouse to a man, whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Both Old and New Testaments declare that Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was a virgin, and she was a virgin until after Jesus Christ was born. It's a marvelous thing that God in his power could bring birth to a woman who was a virgin. There are some books that are written that people call Bibles that deny the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Brethren, if you don't believe in the virgin birth of Christ, or if you don't believe a whale swallowed Jonah, it doesn't matter whether you call it a whale or a great fish, God calls it both things. If you don't believe what the Word of God says, if you don't believe in the power of God, uh, then you really are in serious trouble in your life. But this angel came to Mary and told her that the Holy Ghost was going, not going to keep reading all of this chapter, but the angel told, Gabriel told Mary that you're going to have a child and that child is going to be conceived of the Holy Ghost. That was a marvelous work. And Mary talks back. You can go home and read in this chapter of Mary talking with the angel and the angel talking with Mary. Let me pause to say this. That sometimes when we pray, and I was talking with a lady this week on the phone, and she said, Brother Mullis, I have just learned to start trying to listen to God when I pray. She said, all my life, and the lady's in her 70s, she said, all my life I have prayed, but I have just said words to God. I have communed with God. I have prayed to God, but I have never listened to God. We learn, need to learn to listen to God. We need to listen to the Word of God. But when we're praying, we need to learn to listen to God also. Now, go back to Matthew chapter 1. I want to mention one other time here where an angel is speaking to an individual. But I want you to know then we're going to proceed to show that the angel of God, there is an angel that has spoken to every one of you even if you don't recognize and realize it's happened. I believe that you'll see that as we go along. But the angel speaks now in Matthew chapter 1. There's an angel that speaks to Joseph. We're going to begin with Matthew 1, beginning in verse 18. The Word of God says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins." I want you to know that God named John the Baptist. It was a miraculous birth. John the Baptist was a miraculous birth. The angel spoke to Zacharias, telling him that they were going to have a son. And now the angel spoke to Mary, told her about her being with child, her going to be with child. Now the angel is speaking to Joseph. It's a, it's a wonderful thing, brethren, to think about the fact that God does speak to his people. But remember that God's angels will never tell his people and the spirit of God will never lead his people to do something contrary to what God says in his holy word. We better be careful about thinking that God's telling us to do things. 
Turn to Revelation chapter 14 now. Revelation chapter 14. I want you to see that God, through an angel, through a celestial angel, we're still talking about celestial angels, heavenly angels, perfect angels, angels that are without sin. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6, the word of God speaks about a celestial angel that has spoken to every one of the born again children of God that have ever lived. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 6. John says, and I saw, and he saw many angels. You read the book of Revelation, you'll see him seeing many angels and hearing many angels. Verse 6 says, Revelation 14, 6, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Who was this angel speaking to? Every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now if you'll back up to Revelation chapter 5, you'll have a clear picture of who those people are. Revelation chapter 5. We're going to come right back here and see what the angel said. But I want you to know that the people that this angel is speaking to and preaching to, preaching this everlasting gospel, it's to the elect family of God who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Look in your Bibles at Revelation chapter 5, beginning in verse 9. The Word of God says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Do you see that Jesus redeemed a people out of, he did not redeem, redeem everybody, he redeemed a people so great that no man can number out of every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And now in Revelation 14 we find that there's an angel, a celestial angel that flew in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Now what was the everlasting gospel? What was the message that this celestial angel has preached to every born again child of God? It's in verse 7, Revelation 14 and verse 7 is the message that every born again child of God has had saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Brethren, this everlasting gospel that this celestial angel has preached to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, the everlasting gospel says four things. The first thing is fear God. Most people do not fear God today because they don't know the Word of God declares repeatedly, fear God. The Old and New Testaments tell the people of God, fear God. This celestial angel has spoken even if they've never been in church, if they've never heard a man preach the Word of God, this celestial angel has taught them in their heart and spoke to their mind and their heart and their soul and said, fear God. Every born again child of God has that understanding in their heart because this everlasting gospel has been preached to them by this celestial angel and the message is first of all fear God and give glory to him rather we're in a season we call Thanksgiving we need to be giving glory to God every day we have this season of the year that we call Thanksgiving we certainly need to be in a special way giving glory to God in this season of the year but we ought to be giving glory to God every day of our lives. When we get out of bed, we ought to be giving glory to God. All during the day, we ought to be giving glory to God. I love to go out to eat, and when I do, I love to watch people kneel, or not kneel. I love to watch them bow their heads at meals and pray. And there was a particular man this week, as Marty and I went together Thursday to eat, and there was a man that bowed his head, and several other, there were four men at another table. They bowed their heads. As I looked around, I saw at least four or five different tables where the people bowed their heads and prayed. And, and some of them were hard workers. They were dressed in clothes, proving they were out working hard, and they were there, but they loved the Lord, and they were not ashamed to pray to God. They were giving glory to God. 
And I went to one of those tables and I said, I want you to know that one of the reasons that God has not destroyed America already is because of people like you that are willing to give glory to God every day of your life. Whether you're in public or in private, you're willing to give glory to God and give thanks to God. And he smiled and he said, thank you, brother. <laughs> we were brothers. We we're brothers. The evidence was there. So this everlasting angel has preached the everlasting gospel. This celestial angel has preached this everlasting gospel to every nation and kindred and tongue and people saying, Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Now that's a third statement that this angel has warned every born again child of God. God's going to judge you. Every child of God in their heart. They know that God's going to judge them. And the scripture says that God writes the laws of God in our heart. So when I begin to do something wrong, even if I haven't ever heard the preaching of this word, there is a spirit of God, the angel of the Lord, has already told me God's going to judge you for what you're doing. Now I can harden my heart and not believe that warning. I can quench the spirit. When the spirit of God warns me, I can proceed and do that that's wrong when I sin willfully, then the judgment of God is going to come upon me because I'm without excuse. And every other born-again child of God is, is without excuse. So the, the message of this angel is, Fear God, give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Fear God. Give glory to God. The hour of His judgment has come. And worship him. Worship him. We need to worship the Lord. So do you see that this angel has spoken to every one of you? This is an angel, celestial angel, that has spoken to every one of the born again children of God. I want you to back up to Luke chapter 15. There's a beautiful picture here in Luke 15 about angels in heaven. We're still talking about celestial angels, perfect angels. Luke chapter 15, there are three parables in Luke chapter 15. The first parable is about a man that had a hundred sheep. And one of those sheep went astray. What did the shepherd do? He left the ninety and nine, he went after that one sheep that went astray. Verse 5 says, we're in Luke 15 verse 5. And when he hath found it, he found that sheep, he layeth it on his shoulders and rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth... Together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you likewise, Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Is God pleased when people repent of their sins? And this man called his neighbors and his friends and he wanted them to rejoice. The shepherd was rejoicing. He wanted his neighbors and his friends to rejoice. And then the scripture says there's joy in heaven over every sinner that repents. We all need to repent of different things, but we better repent. And then he talks about a woman that had ten coins. She lost uh, one of those coins. And she began to search her house for that one coin that was lost. All three of these parables are about, first one's about one out of a hundred sheep that was lost. The second one is about one out of ten coins that was lost. The third one is about one out of two sons that was lost. The second one, the woman that lost one of those ten coins. When she found it, verse 9, we're in Luke 15, verse 9. Listen carefully now, this is the main thing we came after Verse 9 says, And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me. I'll tell you, brethren, we ought to rejoice with one another. We've got a lot to rejoice about. And so this woman called her friends and neighbors and said, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Now listen carefully. This is the main point. Verse 10. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. You hear that? Not only are the, per the individuals that found what they had lost, not only are they rejoicing, but their friends and their neighbors are rejoicing. But more importantly, in verse 10, it says that there is joy 
in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Can you imagine that? The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Every time there's a sinner that repents, the angels of heaven are rejoicing. And that's a wonderful, marvelous picture to me. Now, so far all we've talked about is celestial angels. Now we're going to begin to look at terrestrial angels or human angels. That is individuals. What does the word angel mean? What does the word angel mean? It means a messenger. Angel is a messenger. It also means an angel is a ministering spirit. So an angel is a messenger and an angel is a minister according to the word of God. He's a messenger and he's a minister. And there are men who are called by God to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they are angels. Does not mean they are without sin. They're completely different than the celestial angels. They're human beings. The scripture says in John chapter 1 there was a man sent from God whose name was John. I'll tell you brethren, he was a man. But he was a man sent from God. And he was called by God. To preach the word of God to the people of God. And then the word of God we find in Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to begin with verse 20. The last, the last verse. Or Revelation chapter 1 and verse 20. The word of God says. He's talked about a vision he saw. And then he explains the vision in verse 20. He says the mystery of the seven stars. Which thou sawest in my right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So the seven stars are the what? They're the angels of the churches. And the seven candlesticks are the churches. Next verse, chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, Brethren, when he says unto the angel of the church at Ephesus, he's not talking about a celestial angel. He's talking about the pastor or the preacher or the minister that God's called to preach the word to the people. Every church, that's the church of Jesus Christ, every one of them has a man called by God to preach the word of God until God withdraws his spirit from that church. And God does sometimes withdraw his spirit from churches. And when that happens, then God does not send preachers to preach to them anymore. Once God is through with the church, once God has removed his candlestick, it can still be a religious organization, it can still be a civic club, it can still be a group of people come together, but it is not the church of Jesus Christ when God has removed his spirit. And when God removes his spirit, he no longer sends angels to preach to those individuals. So the word of God says, and, and you can go home and read each of these. Revelation chapter 2 verse 1. Under the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. What are the seven stars? What are the seven stars? They're the seven angels. Who holds the seven stars in his hand? God does. The seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Who is it that's walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks holding the stars in his right hand? Jesus Christ is walking and he is judging the churches and he, and he speaks to this church through the angel. Listen carefully. He speaks to this church and to each of these seven churches of Asia. He speaks to them a message from Jesus Christ to the people of God in that church. And the angel, that man that God's called to preach the word, he preaches the word to those churches. And these churches are, some of them, most of them, are being warned by God that unless they change, and unless they repent, that God was going to remove his candlestick. He was going to spew them out of his mouth. The churches were going to cease to be the church of Jesus Christ unless they did one thing. What was the one word that he told every one of them they needed to do? They needed to repent. That's exactly right. And if they repented, if they heard the preaching and they repented, there was going to be great joy in heaven and there would also be great joy among the people of God if they began to repent. 
So God sends angels, messengers, ministers, preachers to preach the word of God to his churches. Go with me in closing. The one We're going to continue tonight, Lord willing, looking at these uh, terrestrial angels, human beings that God has called to be angels. Back up in your Bibles to Malachi, Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. The word of God says, For the priest's lips. Now, in the New Testament, men that are called by God to preach the word of God, they're called preachers or pastors or elders or bishops. In the Old Testament, they were called priests. The word of God says in Malachi 2, 7, the priest, that's the Old Testament preachers and the messenger of the Lord of hosts, for the priest's lips should keep knowledge and they should seek the law at his mouth for he, that is the priest, is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Do you see that the priest in the Old Testament, like preachers in the New Testament, they are messengers of the Lord of hosts. They bring a message from God to the people of God. So there is a celestial angel that flies in the midst of heaven that preaches that everlasting gospel to all the elect family of God, very limited amount of knowledge that's given there. But then the priests or preachers today, they preach in much more detail the truth of the word of God and expound on what God has to say to his people. We need to thank God for that celestial angel that has preached the everlasting gospel but we also need to thank God for the different messengers that speak to us. Now listen carefully. And I'll go ahead and tell you this in, in closing. The preachers, are, the preachers are sometimes angels. But God does sometimes use other people besides preachers to speak to you and to me. God sends sometimes little children to speak to us. Out of the mouths of babes, sometimes God speaks to his people. God sends brothers and sisters in Christ to speak to you sometimes. It doesn't have to be an ordained pastor or an ordained elder to bring a message to you from God. So when someone comes to you with a message, you need to listen carefully. And then you need to try the spirits, whether they be of God. Thank God for those celestial angels and thank God for the terrestrial angels. Is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. When we walk